Hello everyone, welcome to RecFix Education Webinar, um, Preventing Racism in the Classroom with Jane Lewis. You can probably hear from my voice, maybe, that I'm a bit sick. So lovely Jane is going to do the majority of the talking in this webinar and for which I'm very grateful. My pleasure, Sarah. As everyone's coming in, we'd really love you to pop whatever country you're on into the chat. And here's a little map of all of the language groups in um, Australia to give you a little bit of a guide or um, a bit of inspiration. Fantastic. We've got people in Wurundjeri country. Look at this. It's 65,000 years a multicultural country. Hundreds of languages. If you're just coming in now, we're popping whatever country that we're on into the chat so everyone can see what different First Nations lands we're on at the moment. Wonderful to see. Thanks, everybody. I'm just going to acknowledge um, that Reconciliation Victoria does acknowledge the traditional owners of country throughout Victoria and recognises First Peoples continuing connection to lands, waters and community. We pay our respects to elders past and present who carry the memories, traditions, cultures and aspirations of First People and who forge ahead for emerging leaders. Over to you, Jane. Thanks. Hi, everybody from the land of the Boonwurrung people of the Kulin Nations. I pay my respects to elders past, present and future and to First Nations educators joining us. I actually bow down with deep respect to all of you teaching the leaders of the future, doing your best to create cultural safety at school in the face of this resounding no, huge job. Let's take a good hard look at cultural danger, racism. But where are you now? Let's take, check the technology. Go to your mentee screen and what's your current confidence level in preventing and dispelling racism? Wonderful, quite a few, not at all. A little reasonably excellent. Get onto those that menti code once. Here's a suggestion. There's the link. Well done. It's such a big job. So important for us to be clear about what racism is and how it works, so that we're on the same page. Too often people use it to, to mean any kind of uh, intergroup conflict, any kind of ethnic tension. That's good. Is that closed, do you think? No, we've... Okay, let's, well, let's move on to the next question then. Who's here? My ancestors are from all over the UK. We, br we brought the liquor and the white flour and the sugar. What, what about yours? Where are your most recent ancestors from? Very good. Let's get quite a few answers from this. You know, we've got, oh, we've got 130 people joining us today. Isn't this fantastic? People are still joining us. That's good. Old Irish gets a mention too. Absolutely. Hooray, Yorta Yorta. I'll be back on Yorta Yorta country in a couple of weeks. I can't wait. I get up there whenever I can. Oh, it's, apparently we could only pick one. Okay, this is, that's life. No matter how well prepared we are, the technology will always disappoint us in one way or another, isn't it? Amazing. Okay, look, we've got, we've got this is wonderful that we've got First Nations, First Nations um, 
educators with us. We really look really looking forward to your thoughts. Please be in touch with me. I'm going to be moving very fast today, but please be in touch with me with your thoughts and 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 reactions and suggestions for me. Wonderful. Okay, so this is um, it's it's interesting. We've got quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of diversity there. But there's a lot of pressure on educators these days to prevent and dispel racism, big responsibility. This is a really fast moving webinar. It's designed to give you a bit more conceptual confidence and some practical tips to reduce harm. But following these evidence based steps, it's designed to minimize backlash and trauma. And it maximizes learning transfer on contentious topics. It's a it's a really useful model you might like to use in all sorts of other in other settings. But let's learn where racism came from and what it really is. We're about to watch a five and a half minute video. I want you to be aware of your reactions. Yes, we will be able to give you a copy of the slides, but I'd like you to ask for it. So please put your email in the chat when there's something that you want. Please be aware of our reactions because I want you to be aware of where you feel them in your body. Discomfort is good for us. These are growing pains. Okay, here we go. Let's watch five and a half minutes of video. We need to work together with a range of points of view to serve a new world, to save life on earth. There is no time to waste and talent is everywhere, but racism is designed to divide us. Anti-racism means equal access, closer collaboration, smarter problem solving, better innovation. How do we get there? by making an anti-racism commitment to remove the barriers and biases that divide us. It's not our fault they're there, but it is our job to let them go if we want the rewards. White people worldwide are trying to catch up and understand what racism really is, how white dominance operates. Everyone else has known all along don't get left behind. Let's start by admitting that racism is a touchy subject. I'm not here to raise feelings of guilt. Although that's what we may notice, it's not helpful or necessary. In fact, it's optional extra suffering. Often misunderstood is where the concepts of race and racism came from. Conquests, slavery, sexism, religious wars, and divisions into us's and them's have been around for thousands of years. It's easy to think that racism has too. Not so. Starting just 300 years ago, enlightened white men sought to rationalize and justify their ongoing colonial looting and atrocities. This was a planned exercise to excuse the unethical but highly profitable business they were in and which they had no willingness to abandon simply because it was inhuman. They invented the myth of a few distinct races of humans around the world. They stole and measured skulls from colonial genocides and concluded scientifically that the white race was the most highly evolved and must bring civilization to those yellow, red or black races of savages and nomads. Invasion was for their own good. They should be grateful. Britain invaded more countries more recently than any other. They didn't always win, but they tried everywhere pink on this map. The British Crown declared this continent an empty land, terra nullius, dismissing the longest continuing cultures on the planet. In New Zealand, the Crown mistranslated the Waitangi Treaty into Maori 
to deceive the chiefs and steal land. Australia and New Zealand both had white-only immigration policies. New Zealand in secret, Australia latently. For hundreds of years, Westerners have lived in societies where the norm is an individual white man, and anything else is diversity. Apparently, just referring to white people as a group is reverse racism. I could, be, I could be a reverse racist if I wanted to. Uh, all I would need would be a uh, time machine, right? And uh, what I'd do is I'd get in my time machine, I'd go back in time to before Europe colonized the world, right? And uh, I'd convince the leaders of Africa, Asia, the Middle East, Central and South America to uh, invade and colonize Europe, right? Just occupy them, steal their land and resources, set up some kind of like, I don't know, trans-Asian slave trade where we exported white people to work on giant rice plantations in China. <laughs> Just ruin Europe over the course of a couple of centuries so all their descendants would want to migrate out and live in the places where black and brown people come from. But of course, in that time, I'd make sure I set up systems that privilege black and brown people at every conceivable social, political and economic opportunity. <laughs> white people would never have any hope of real self-determination. Is every couple of decades make up some fake war as an excuse to go and bomb them back to the Stone Age and <laughs> say it's for their own good because their culture is inferior and just for kicks subject white people to colored people's standards of beauty so they end up hating the color of their own skin, eyes and hair. <laughs> if after hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years of that I got on stage at a comedy show and said, hey, what's the deal with white people? Why can't they dance? <laughs> that would be reverse racism. Isn't he amazing? So, but look at this map. How different is this from what we were taught? The only places Britain hasn't invaded. And I have a rhetorical question. What messages are you sending in your classrooms about colonialism? When I was a child, we were, we were proud of all of the British pink on the map. But now, as a descendant of various British settlers and murderers, it's my job, I think, to, to tell the truth about what my people did and what we do. Staying silent is not an option. Let's look at what the, some of the massacres. This is extraordinary research done by the University of Newcastle, all in secret too. Racism works in code, using words like dispersal and affray, but these were all recorded. The, um, the next slide shows the ones in Victoria that were that were identified by Koori Heritage Trust, several on several there on Yorta Yorta land. Um, but these, and there, but so many of the massacres were silent, weren't reported. It was young men going out as they do now to kill wallabies or rabbits. Terrible, terrible tragedies occurred, just hidden away in secret. And so this is, and then, and then those that were saved, often with Christian benevolence, were herded into the detention camps. The um, the reserves and missions all around Victoria where they were forbidden from teaching, from speaking their own language and practicing their own cultures. But this is extraordinary, extraordinary history and so recent, and so recent. But let's now to really have a look at the significance, what this means now, here and now. Let's have a look at at 10 questions. I'm going to, we're going to do this really fast. I'm going to ask you to grab a piece of paper and write the numbers one to 10 down the side with your name on the top. This is, I'm going to do this very fast because we don't have a lot of time, but I'm encouraging you to do this with your students. So um, write your name up at the top on the left hand side, leave space top and bottom. Let's keep clicking through those instructions. Your own name up at the top left. And as I read out the questions, I want you to write down your own answers, just yes or no or question mark next to each number. Okay, here we go. Question number one. Have people of your ethnic 
not not yet not yet sarah go back <laughs> thank you okay people uh, sorry have people of your ethnic background this is you colonized many other countries to acquire land and resources yes no or question mark question two were the laws and infrastructure of this country created by and for people of your race Question three, were your grandparents counted as human beings in their own country, free to speak their own languages and practice their own cultures? And please, for First Nations people and actually for anyone of non-British appearance, please forgive me for these reminders, but we've got a rare chance to reflect today and I'm so grateful that you're here. Question number four, were your ancestors able to work, acquire property and leave a legacy for their children. Let's draw a little line under answer number four. Those were multi-generational questions. Now a couple of societal ones. Question five, do you feel that the police are there to protect you and your property? Question six, are almost all authority figures and leading characters in Australian TV shows of your race? race doesn't exist but look how it's used another little line on under, under answer six some organizational questions two of them question seven are you in the clear racial majority in your school including the senior leaders and administrators and question eight can you raise personal issues at school without fear you'll be labeled as playing the race card or oversensitive Another line under answer number eight, one interpersonal question. Interpersonal racism is what gets all of the attention, but it's a tiny part of the picture. Question nine, when you leave home, are you confident you'll get home later without having suffered racist attacks or abuse? Another line under answer number nine, one more, an internalized question. Question 10, were you taught that people of your skin color have been the source of all civilization, morality, and progress. Okay, fantastic. Now, those are your answers. Now, let's move on. Now, let's compare your results with Tony's results, right? Tony up at the top right. And then, and let's have a look at Tony's face. Tony is a First Nations man. He's, many of his ancestors have lived on these, on these land for thousands of generations keep the instructions coming sarah thank you um as i read out the questions write down what you think again it's a projection but what do you think tony's answers would be yes no or question mark under his heading here we go again question one have people of tony's ethnic background colonized many other countries to acquire land and resources question two were the laws and infrastructure of this country created by and for people of Tony's race? Was, were Tony's grandparents counted as human beings in their own country, free to speak their own languages and practice their own cultures? Question four, were Tony's ancestors able to work, acquire property and leave a legacy for their children? Question five, does Tony feel that the police are there to protect him and his property? Question six, are almost all authority figures and leading characters in Australian TV shows of Tony's race? Question seven, is Tony in the clear racial majority at his school together with the senior leaders and administrators? Question eight, can Tony raise personal issues at school without fear he'll be labeled as playing the race card or oversensitive? When Tony leaves home, can he be confident he'll get home later without having suffered any racist attack or abuse? And finally, was Tony taught that people of his skin color have been the source of all civilization, morality and progress? What do you think? Please let's total now all the results on, under both columns. Let's have some instructions on that, please, Sarah. Count up the total number of yes answers for you and Tony, the yes answers, and then please, a bit of maths, work out the difference between the totals. One more instruction there, Sarah, work out the difference 
between the two totals. And then we've got a menti question on that. What are the, the difference between the two yes scores? For me, it's for me, it's nine to ten. For those with very small differences in numbers, please, I beg, thank you, thank you so much for your patience, and I, and but I beg your forgiveness for these horrendous reminders of this, of these and extraordinary disadvantages these this extraordinary oppression that you've been that you've been suffering that you and your ancestors have been suffering good um, um, this is it's very moving to see the re the results here I'm suspecting that those of us with smaller numbers, you know, sort of, uh, we've got First Nations educators here, but anyone of non-British appearance is likely to be, to be suffering, to be suffering a whole lot of no answers or question marks. Whereas for people that look like me, it's yes all the way through. We don't even see the barriers that other people are facing. Okay. Now we'll have to move on, but we can see now. Let's have now. Let's. I um, want you to use your chat. Let's add those two questions here, please, Sarah. No, one at a time. In single words or concepts, what does it mean to say yes? What does it mean to say yes to? Yes, I feel the police are there to protect me and my property. What does it mean to say that my ancestors were able to work, acquire property and leave a legacy. Privilege, privilege are those words, okay, but that's a vague word. Power, power, that's a very specific word, isn't it? But if, if my ancestors are able to work and acquire property, I've got inherited wealth. If my grandparents were counted as human beings in my own country, then yes, I've got I've got a chance to hold my head high, superiority, good words, good words, a sense of safety, that's right. Power, privilege, wealth, these are wonderful, this is good, it's safe, it feels safe, it's powerful. I feel accepted, I feel, I feel entitled. I feel, lack of equality is the result, I feel valued, that's right, excellent. Excellent. Good. Now the next question. What, how do you think you would feel or how do you feel if you have a low number of yes answers in your life here and now in this country? What does that mean? How do you feel threatened? Come on, come on, different, silenced, no voice, oppressed, excluded, hopeless scared look at this other leanne pearson good on you angry yes that's right and if you express your anger what happens then vulnerable yes you feel vulnerable like i have to exaggerate my my australian accent disenfranchised absolutely invisible brilliant brilliant alone alone these are exactly the results marginalized and look suppressed powerful powerful realizations exposed we'll get all of these words sent out to everybody too um, in, um, in the follow-up in the follow-up emails these are powerful recognitions okay let's move on now we've got lots to get through here's a, here's tony this is tony albert this extraordinary artist this is his painting from a seer and uh, an exhibition called called Brothers that I was lucky enough to see in. Isn't it marvelous? Isn't it marvelous? And this is how this is how Tony feels: marginalized, oppressed. And for here, Tony and his extended family and community, the no vote must feel like terra nullius all over again. Empty land, no one there listening to appalling all right now we've now we've got another video coming up this is 
this has got some very upsetting images and messages in it. So I want you to please stay aware of your reactions and breathe into the bodily sensations that you feel. We've breathed in the myth of white superiority ever since. Millions of white Europeans visited human zoos in Europe and saw the exotic and primitive other behind bars, including Aboriginal cannibals. Pro-white and anti-black propaganda divides the poor and stops them from struggling together for economic justice. True today as it ever was. White people have been conditioned to feel the same disgust and contempt for non-white people as we have for cockroaches. The emotional power of racism is immense. No matter how hard racist scientists continue to look, there are no genetic markers of difference that separate humanity into races. DNA variations within races have proved to be much greater than those between races. And yet belief in white superiority justified land theft, genocide, cultural destruction, enslavement and imposition of Christianity and British military style institutions, bureaucracy and rules. If elimination hasn't worked, then assimilation will remove the problem of inferior races. It's for their own good. They should be grateful. Hollywood has been a whitewashing machine. TV brought white superiority into every household. Just check how many Disney characters have blue eyes. These are deliberately manufactured biases. We may not think we're racist, but we are all thoroughly racialized to believe the myth of white superiority. White dominance is the air we share. Only whites can breathe easy. In America, 80 years ago... Which doll is the black doll? And which one is the white doll? Which doll is the pretty doll? Which doll is the nice doll? Which doll is the bad doll? Which doll is the nice doll? Which doll is the bad doll? And, what, and why is that dog pretty? Because she's white and he has two eyes. Which doll is the ugly dog? Why is that dog ugly? Because he, because he's black. Which doll looks most like you? Like me? Yeah, which one looks like you? And that one. Okay. Recently, in Australia. Can you show me the doll that you like the best? Mm. That one. Okay. And which doll do you want to play with? Um, that one. And which doll do you think is the nice doll? Um, that one. And which is the smart doll? That one. And which doll looks like your best friend? And which doll looks like you? Do any of the dolls look like they're not Australian? Both of them? Okay. Mm, that one. This one and this one. Tell me, what's in this picture? A bicycle. Okay, cool. Matty Wilkes is a PhD student studying morality in childhood. Today she's running a test called the Ambiguous Situations Task. Can you see, this is Harry and this is Kyle? Each picture shows an ambiguous event involving two different races. So what the child reads into the scene is a window into their unconscious racial beliefs. 
Can you tell me what do you think is happening in this picture? Well, Harry has lost his money and Kyle has found it. And what's Kyle going to do next? Probably spend it or take it home. Okay, and is that a good or bad thing to do? Bad. It's a bad thing, okay. So, we're going to look at another picture now. Are you ready? Yeah. See this picture? We've got Harry and Kyle. Yeah. What do you think is happening in this picture? Well, Kyle has lost his money and Harry has found it. Okay, so what's Harry going to do next? Give it back to him. And is that a good or bad thing to do? Good. It's a good thing to do. All right. Okay, it's what we've got to realize, yeah, is how strong our reaction to that is. But oh my God, indeed. Wow, yeah. Which reactions are strongest, strong for you now? You may only be able to choose one. Is it shock? Is it anger? Is it sadness? Are you trying to work out what this means, bargaining? Or do you know this all too well and just find it validating? It's incredibly sad. Shocking, enough to make us anger, angry. It's just, it's our children really bring out our compassion, don't they? But we need self-compassion here, ladies and gentlemen, because who was a child in the last 80 years? Every single one of us. And that means that we've internalized white superiority. As someone said, this is just, yeah, this is recent. Someone's just said that they've seen the first version before, but yes, recently, there's nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. We can get it. We can get some. We can get some some diverse dolls now if we look hard enough. But still, vast majority. But we've all raised to believe in white superiority. Everyone around the world who's been exposed to Western media. We are useless to anti-racism if we don't recognise the pervasiveness of our own conditioning about the master race. This is why Professor Yin Paradis devised reflexive anti-racism, which is accepting the limitations of our racialized thought and unlearning racism. It's a lifelong project, but while actively engaging as allies. So where did that's great, but what where did we learn all of this? Have a quick look. We we'll just look at a few seconds of this. But I go to supermarkets and um, and um, um, and service stations and news agents, wherever we buy our magazines, this is what we see. Here and now, today, white and the British royal family. There's nothing post-colonial about Australia. The mapping social co let's yeah, let's move on now. Mapping social cohesion report was published on Wednesday. 63% of Australians reported negative attitudes to migrants from Asia, Middle East, or Africa, but only positive attitudes to those from UK, U US, and Europe. But honestly, how could they not? This is the relentless message: is that white is normal. If this test, if the good question about whether the test, the doll test is completed in places in an Aboriginal community, if they've been watching white television, then, then we all get the same thing. My invitation to you here as educators is what is your, what is your, uh, what's your message about the use of cliches, English teachers in particular? What does the word dark so often mean? White is normal. Light is, light is good. What does the word dark often mean? It means criminal, it means destructive, it means bad, it means sad, it means depressed. It just, I ask, this is humanity's oldest cliche. Sure, it's, 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 it's compelling. Light and dark is an obvious, is an obvious metaphor, but let's, my invitation is let's explore what actually we really mean rather than using it as this shortcut. 
That's those. So those are. But the other message that we keep getting all the time, and this was crucial throughout the no vote, is that any win for Black, Indigenous, or people of colour would mean a loss for white people. This is the this is the cause of the neo Nazism all around the world. This is this sense that it's a, this is called the zero sum myth. It's a myth. It's not true. There is enough for everyone. Let's click on. That's the zero sum. It's a lie. But nonetheless, you watch the media promote it and promote it. The last thing that we hear all the time is that racist is a noun and it means bad person, which means I can't possibly be that. Donald Trump is the least racist person in the world, as he says, because it means bad person and that can't be me. If people don't watch TV, then maybe they've got a hope of not being, but they can't go into shops and they can't go anywhere much. Now let's listen to three schoolgirls talking about the toxic atmosphere that has many levels. We're only exploring three levels of all of those levels of atmosphere here. We're not looking at multi-generational or societal here. Here we're looking at the organisational in schools, at interpersonal and at internalised. Let's have a listen to these First Nations schoolgirls and see what they say. You can't speak about it to a council, even if you do. Especially in school, they're not really there to help you. They don't help at all. I've spoken to teachers who just sort of, oh, you know, it's okay. You will get through this, just pretend you can't see them, but they're not addressing the issue and it, you sort of just have to deal with it on your own. Oh, you're too white to be an Aboriginal. Surely or not, you have to be at least however much percentage, um, because apparently there's a percentage of how much you are, um, even being called half-caste. Well, you're really pretty for an Aboriginal or things like that, because I'm not seen as a having the typical features of what people think an Aboriginal is. Um, so yeah, that's many of the different comments I've had. I grew up saying, you don't, you don't look like you're black. You don't, you look like a monkey. Do you, your hair's funny. Why isn't it straight like other girls? Like those little things, they add up over time and you realize that it's really like, it is racist. It is racist to say, you're, you look like a monkey or you look the same as another girl who's black, or what, you don't look like you're a Torres Strait Islander. You don't look like a First Nations person. And those are some of the things I've experienced and I feel like those are the biggest things that need to be talked about is you don't say those things, they, they are racist. It really hurts to be someone who's different and it makes me feel so alone and kind of separated from the rest of the world. I feel disconnected because of racism and it affects, it affects a lot, a lot and a lot. If I saw a group of kids being racist to each other in that Yes, it's really worth going to the end and just seeing what Lena says there. Yeah, Being racist you. to each other. In that moment, I probably wouldn't stand up for, it, for them and say that it's racist because I'd feel a little uncomfortable and scared to do that. So I'd, I'd probably go back home and think about it hardly and really just be disappointed in them and in myself for not standing up. see this chat many school staff are ill-equipped to, re to respond to these girls to make the girls feel better about themselves and learn to stand up for themselves or to educate the perpetrators but is it but please make a note of their names so that you can you can be in touch with me later and tell everybody but this but but is it up to the girls to stand up for it 
this is again th this is a bit of intersectional truth telling from from Tiali and Taran and Lena, because they are they are not just First Nations; they are also female. This is, and we can do another ten questions on being female. This, these are exponentially harder lives, and so, so let's look at the next slide now. Is this this is this is the some of the racism that we hear? This is a marvelous piece of art by Werner Narki. This is in the National Gallery. Please look it up. Um, there are videos on the on the website that that cover this. Um, um, but but please email me later. But the, the, these were the some of the things that we heard that we heard over and over again during the during the uh, referendum campaigns. You, I'm not racist, but you can't tell me that the government doesn't look after them. You can't. I'm not racist, but us white people have had it pretty hard too. You know, I'm not racist, but maybe they're poor because they want to be. I'm not racist, but didn't we give them the vote? I'm not racist. They just don't understand how the law works. You know, I'm not racist. These people don't even speak English. They're very ungrateful. If it wasn't for us white people, they would have been dead a long time ago. This is. This is endless. This is ostracism. This is um, um, we and we. It is everywhere, and it was uh, is so easily encouraged. Here's Elspeth saying, "It's up to us as educators to prevent racism and respond to it in our schools." That's it. This is this is not up to the the girls themselves. This is up to us. This particularly those of us with lots of yes answers in our lives. How does racism continue to survive because those of us with lots of yes answers stay in ignorance and silence and denial? That's why saying I'm not racist makes it so much worse. It's not, racism is an incredible waste of time and money and it's preventable. It really is. We just have to realize that racism is, was deliberately invented, that it, po that it poisons us all. It's not up to her to, to prevent racism. It's up to us. It's, this is racism is white people's job to solve. So let's transform our organizations and society fast and maybe we can save life on earth. Let's look at some practical tips in the, in the short time left to us because everything is changing and that means that anything is possible. What, what is true is that, that ideas can change fast from being from being completely unthinkable to being uh, radical to being acceptable to being sort of a sense just seeming to be sensible and then popular and then can turn into policy. We saw this happen with marriage equality. This was that was led by that was led by white men, and that's one of the reasons that it was so, so successful. But we need more educators, as Sheila is saying here, being um, upstanding and and knowing what racism really is, not not getting it confused with any kind of intergroup conflict. Racism was deliberately invented. This is white supremacy. So in white Australia fair, racism is our problem to solve, but it's, it's doable. 25% of a population is all that's needed to change a culture and 40% of Australians voted yes. This 25% this, this comes out of amazing research at the University of Pennsylvania. Let's click on the book that you might be interested to read how to make big things happen. So let's look at what we can do. We don't need to be an expert. My, I, can, I can make a difference myself. So we've got to look at all of those levels. We've got to start, we've got to start at the internalized level. We've got to unlearn our own conditioning. We've got to educate ourselves. We can do this at the same time as educating others, but there are resources coming your way with the, some of the videos. These will be sent to you afterwards. These are live links. You can use them in the classroom, use them for a million conversations, please. Um, but we can also weaken our own biases physically. This is extraordinary. As we bring a part of our body, our own body closer to ourselves, we break down the barriers between ourselves and others. Psychology calls these approach actions. And that's this is why eating together brings such, builds stronger connections. Try it wherever you go. There's no need to get a reaction. 
you will wave or smile or sort of, this is for your unlearning. Don't expect to get a wave or a smile back. This is just for your unlearning. Incredibly powerful, but it can make somebody's day actually to have that moment of recognition. Let's move on. We're listening generously. All we have to do is put our phones away entirely out of sight and literally nod and smile and shut up and listen to someone. If you do this in if you do this for more than 30 seconds, you will al almost immediately people start to feel valued and worthwhile and recognized. And, and this is an extraordinary an extraordinary power that we have. I've got a wonderful listening exercise that I can share with you all. Um, and uh, please let's do this with all of our students. Incredibly powerful. Okay, there's an, at the interpersonal level, it's time to be humble. It's time to listen. It's time to make effort and admit mistakes. So, but gently educate others interrupt casual racism but do it don't do it in a in a condemning way do it in a way that lifts people up something that we can do for ourselves and others is to uh, is to look at the um, at the remarkable the remarkable words that summarize the the that summarize the best of humanity in every language there are words in how we think how we find meaning how we act and how we relate to others let's have a look at these cards and if you want them please this i want you all to send me this because this is i'll send you a pack of cards if you email me jane at janelewis.com.au i won't share this with everybody because not everybody wants it uh, this is these are remarkable just reading these words strengthens those qualities and that's and that makes us incredibly uh, just stronger and stronger in the way that we upstand and the way that we support others uh, when we uh, students and staff alike when we hear some careless careless racist remark let's interrupt and say oh, look I'm sure it's not your intention but those are really harmful words or addressing the emotional upset the reason that we got such a strong no vote is because of the cost of living because everyone is feeling under pressure so if that's not like you to sound so defensive are you okay today let's address the the emotional upset that triggers the racist stereotypes that are in all of us or curiously asking where do you think you first heard that stereotype or we can dismantle them with a little bit of critical thinking some if you hear a stereotype some might be but some people who are not in that group can also have that show that characteristic too simple words hey we all want to feel like we belong or come if you see something harmful happen get the perpetrator out of there you can go and look after the target later but get the get the perpetrator out let's go take a break and have a chat about safety again in an uplifting friendly way if you hear anyone say i'm not racist but you can guarantee that what they're about to say is racist so don't let it out interrupt say maybe not but we were raised in a racist world please let's make school a safe place if you are if you are constantly asked where are you from i invite you to say oh interesting question after you where did your ancestors come from we are all newcomers if we are not first nations people if you see people that people who are of, who are non-british non-british non-european australians giving each other a hard racist hard time remind them say remember racism was designed to divide us don't let it win again these are friendly ways, friendly ways of stepping up. Mm, yes, but people do say very hurtful things. I must have a look at this. Where are you from? I've been asked that all of my life and I was born here. The same with my brother, the same with my brother who's Hong Kong Chinese parents. But, uh, he, but yes, it's just extraordinary um, how little how little understanding there is. Okay, so then we can take action. Let's have a look at what we can do at all of those levels very briefly. And please bear in mind that you can you can contact me. We can talk about this. We can have more conversations. We can help you at the organisational level too. This is 
this is bias proofing school wide organizational processes. We have to admit that we are biased. It doesn't matter if we think we're in the choir and we think we're on the right track. We are dealing with internalized racism, every single one of us. So let's bias proof um, this, the processes. At the, we've got to initiate and implement anti racist accords. We can come, people can come to agreements in classrooms. Policies and practices must be revisited so that we're preventing racism. We're creating really clear consequences for any breaches. This is not just simply about cre about diversity and inclusion. This is specifically about anti-racism. Let's require anti-racism as a professional standard for everyone working in schools. At the societal level, join forces online, in crowds, lobby and lead decolonizing of political, economic, legal and educational systems. You know, so we can do this. And at the multi-generational level, let's learn from the Germans who have so, of course, that the Nazis really, really honed the master race idea to its ghastly logical conclusion, but let's feel regret and not guilt for racism. It's been just as bad here. It just was spread over a much longer period. So we've got to work to undo all of the harm of multi-generational racism. This is what we can do together. So finally, we're going to watch one more short video. Towards the end of this, you'll meet Wakaya Man, Professor Yin Paradis, Chair of Race Relations at Deakin University and the divisor of reflexive anti-racism. Let's have a look. Anti-racism isn't a personal attack on white people. It's the racist reality we need to change. Anti-racism means making a commitment to respect anger and take a good hard look at others' realities and our own complicity until now. I'm done not being angry. I am angry. And if you don't like me being angry, then by all means, Australia, take my furious button and run this race for me. Because we are dying in infancy. We are dying in custody. And we are dying decades earlier than you. And you should be as angry about that as I am. And they are lucky that what black people are looking for is equality and not revenge. Everything is changing, so anything is possible. Anti-racism means humbly learning the complexity and sophistication of Aboriginal history and supporting their continuing struggle for self-determination. Everything we do and say arises from our thoughts and beliefs. Every skillful action makes a better world. To look after others is to look after ourselves. Anti-racism means practicing compassionate skills for releasing ourselves and others from prejudice. We're missing out the most by not embracing diversity on, on community, on love and care and creativity, everything that is beyond the kind of core of modern systems. So modern societies are so focused on competition, so focused on uh, individualism, on, on merit, on achievement, on progress, on status. Beyond all those things is the beautiful world of human expression, working together, collaborating, and then doing that with all other life on the planet as well. We change our minds when we want to change our minds. Okay, let's check again. How well equipped do you now feel to help prevent racism in your school?
Perhaps it's and we click the go button with the mentee. Okay. There's the code. Oh, here we go. Here are some answers. Okay, we've got people making an anti-racism commitment, people who can't wait to dive into the resources, people who are nervous but willing to give it a go, people who understand the history of race and white dominance in a new way. This is marvellous. There's no one so far as a bit nervous of saying, I don't know enough to try. It's really worth making the effort, isn't it? Making the effort, but with compassion, not with, not with condemnation. It's absolutely unsurprising. This, is, this, was, this country was white Australia for too long. Okay, so I'm, people will have to leave very soon, but from my heart, thank you all so much for making the time today. Reflexive anti-racism gives us the humility and the courage we really need to, to dismantle white supremacy and provide more cultural safety. That recognition that we too are tainted with this, no matter what our intentions are, we've been conditioned to be racist. That, to, to acknowledge that is such a step forward for people who are targets of racism. Let's provide cultural safety, have many conversations, share the resources everywhere. Let's talk again soon. Please be in touch. I can help you with these conversations. Jane at janelewis.com.au, absolutely, to gain access to the how we think, how we act, how we find meaning how we relate to others cards and I'll Jane, send you I'd a... just like to say a heartfelt thanks and to um yes both introduce you and myself because we got straight into the webinar at the beginning so yes Jane Lewis everybody through her email and I'm Sarah the education officer at Reconciliation Victoria and please uh, use this QR code now to join up for our membership platform it's where we store all our webinars and also um, all our resources and a newly formed chat room as well. Thank you so much, Jane. That was fabulous. We really um, appreciate your time. It's, it's my great pleasure. I love having these conversations. Please call me out to your school to, to, to lead one. We can do it with school. We can do it with the kids. We can do it with, the, uh, with all of the teachers. Large groups can work well to these uh, powerful conversations where we can end up with anti-racism accords that people sign up for, that we can all make anti-racism commitments and increase the equanimity and affection between all students and all teachers. Incredibly powerful stuff. Thank you so much for being here, everyone. It's been, it's been a joy. Thank you so much, everybody. Look out for our next upcoming webinar. Thanks so much.